<laughs> All right. Hi, Tim. Hello. Hi, my name is Mary, and I'm a student nurse from CVTC Technical College, and I'll be here assisting you today with your dressing change. Um, first off, I just need your full name and date of birth. Tim Palmetto. Uh-huh. 10, 16, 64. Perfect. I was just checking my chart here, and it looks like that is correct. Uh, do you have any allergies, Tim? Okay, very good. All right, so we're just gonna go, we're just gonna begin and I'm gonna take a peek at that, um, that dressing on your, on your abdomen there. And uh, the physician has also ordered us just to take a little sample of that, um, of the secretions inside there. And we're just gonna test them just to make sure that um, everything is, is healing well in there. Okay? okay? Great. And I just have to um, ask you, is it okay if I call you Tim or should I refer to you as some, a different name like Mr. Pometlo? Tim is fine. Tim is fine? Okay. Very good. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and get started here then. Um, do you have any questions of me? Nope. All right. You've had this done before. I know they did this yesterday, so it's going to be pretty similar to that. And we did give you your pain medication an hour ago and um, we did give you 650 milligrams of um, acetaminophen. So I'm just going to ask you how you're, how you're doing for your pain right now on a scale of 0 to 10, 10 being the worst pain you've ever felt. Where would you kind of place that pain now that you've had your Tylenol? It's about a 5. About a 5. Okay. Um, so if the is that a tolerable uh, level of pain for you? Yes. Okay. All right, good. So we'll go ahead and get started with that, but let me know at any time if you're having um, more pain or discomfort. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my gloves on here. And we're gonna take a peek at your wound first. So I'm just gonna pull the covers down. And we're gonna pull up your gown. All right, okay. So everything on the outside of the dressing looks good. We always want to assess the wound um, whenever we are doing a dressing change or whenever we are um, uh, doing a culture. We just want to make sure we do a good assessment. So I'm going to go ahead and take all this off. Okay. And I'll try to remove it as one. Okay, good. So you can see as I'm doing my assessment, I am actually looking at the integrity of the wound. And you know, it looks like we got some granulation tissue going on. It's an open wound. Um, we also have some drainage and it's kind of a thick um, sanguineous type of drainage. So it's more bloody and, but it's, it's a little bit thick. So we would wanna go ahead and make sure that we document that, the amount of drainage, and I would call this a moderate amount of drainage for this situation. I also want to note um, if there's any foul odor um, and you know if I'm smelling anything that doesn't smell right and in addition to that I'm looking at the peri wound to see if there's any redness or swelling um, that perhaps is, is getting worse or is increasing or maybe it's a new onset. So again the peri wound is very important as well. Okay so I'm done looking at the dressing so I'm going to make sure I note that. Now that I am ready to go ahead and irrigate the wound. I want to irrigate it before I do a culture, since the culture was ordered by the physician. And you want to determine uh, what type of culture it was ordered, whether it was an anaerobic, aerobic, or both. Right. So I'm basically going to just put this um, pad right here to catch any drainage or secretions that might be coming from the wound. Ideally, if this was a real person, I would probably kind of have them lean to the side so that when I irrigate it, I can irrigate it from the clean to the dirty part of the wound and have it drain outward toward the dirty part. So from the top to the bottom. But at this point, we, we have a mannequin for this. So it might not be the ideal situation. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and try to irrigate from top to bottom of the wound. and try to get most of that drainage out there so I can get a good okay great all right so I kind of want to get some a little bit of that drainage in there as well when I do my culture okay so I'm going to go ahead and grab my culture at 
Um, so you would have to just check at your facility um, which culturette would be for your anaerobic aerobic or utilize for both. Okay. So you want to make sure you maintain sterility of the um, Q-tip that's in there because that's the culturette that you're going to use to swipe the wound. Um, you particularly want to get, um, you know, kind of the deepest part of the wound and try to get as much as the drainage as you can with a nice uh, clean swipe. So now I have my culturette in the wound and I'm just going to do a clean swipe. And then you just want to make sure that your tube is open. You don't want to try to touch the sides and you want to go ahead and just get that drainage in the tube and close that up. And then when you're all done and cleaned up, you can go ahead and label that and get that to the lab. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and change my gloves here for now. And I'm gonna go ahead and wash my hands again. <clears throat> And I'm going to put a new pair of gloves on, just regular gloves. I'm going to kind of dry out that wound a little bit before I do my dressing change on it. So I'm just going to take a 4x4 four four here. Okay. And I'm just going to kind of dab that out. Okay. okay, very good. Okay, so we're done with that. Now I'm going to take my gloves off again. And I'm going to wash my hands again. So I'm going to put another pair of clean gloves on. And I'm going to measure my wound. So it's good to keep measurements on it so that you can watch the progress of how it is um, healing, if it is healing. Okay. But the bed of the wound looks really good. I see granulation tissue, it's very healthy looking. <clears throat> All right, so next, there's a variety of ways you can measure a wound. Um, you can use this chart, which is already pre-made and it has circles on it. If you have a circular wound to do circumference and so forth, diameter. Um, it also has a linear measuring device on it. Um, I'm gonna go with the measuring tape because I, I feel most comfortable with that. But when you are doing measurements of a wound, you always want to make sure that you um, measure in centimeters. And then when you're looking at the wound, the top of the wound is considered 12 o'clock. Um, the right side is 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 9 o'clock, so that when you're documenting, you can document if there, you know, if there's something, some tunneling or something at, you know, 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock. So centimeters is where we're going with this. And don't worry about this because this should be in the patient's room and only used for the patient. So you won't be transferring it back and forth. I'm gonna use a Q-tip to get a good measurement on this. And the first I'm gonna do is the length of it. So I'm just gonna set the Q-tip right on it there. And I'm gonna grab the length. And my length is approximately um, 11 centimeters. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do the height here. Okay, and my height is about three centimeters. And lastly, I'm gonna go ahead and do the depth. And my depth is about one centimeter. So now I have my measurement of the actual wound. Okay, and one last thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna check for um, tunneling and undermining. So what that means is you're gonna go underneath the skin to see if um, there's any breakages underneath there or tunnels. And I'm not noting any, any of that, no tunneling, no undermining with that. Good, awesome. So. That's a good sign. All right, so finally, I'm gonna go ahead and remove my clean gloves and I'm gonna start my sterile dressing procedure right now. All right, so now um, that we've assessed the wound and we've done measurements, I'm gonna go ahead and get ready for my sterile dressing change. So this is a sterile procedure. Uh, we're gonna make sure we wash our hands before we begin. 
Uh, we, again, we've also made sure that we've checked the ID on the patient and verified that and any allergies, and we can go ahead and begin. Um, this is what I'm gonna do first. We have um, three parts to this dressing. We have some gauze, we have some super sponges, and we have an ABD, and that's gonna go on the top. So when I open these, I wanna make sure that I keep them sterile. You open them, again, you're gonna open them outward, and you can touch the very outermost parts of them because remember that that outer border is considered non-sterile. All right. And then we have our curlics, our super sponges that we're gonna open too. All right. And I'm just gonna move these two in the opposite order here. Okay. And then we also have our ABD, which is gonna go on last. And you try to, you know, get, get as much as you can off the, you know, the peeling because you don't want to um, contaminate it if it folds back. All right, so I'm going to be using um, normal saline to help saturate the dressing that's going to go inside of the wound. Um, this is a wet to dry dressing. So that means that we're going to put in a slightly damp um, dressing within the wound and then we're going to cover it um, with hopes that when we do remove it, we can have some debridement of that wound with this becoming dry. That's why they call it wet to dry. So again, you're checking your um, saline, you're making sure it's not expired, and you're just gonna saturate this ever so lightly. You don't need a ton because it's gonna get too wet then. And our wound isn't hugely deep, so we don't need a ton of it. All right, so I have that wet, I have that open and that open. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put on my sterile gloves. There isn't a ton of room on this table, but I'm gonna to try to make it work here. Wash my hands. Okay. Okay. Take that, just move that quick here. All right. So a lot of times in nursing, you don't have a lot of space for things, but Try to have enough so where you're not um, you're not putting this over that sterile field. So you want to stay away from that if you can. All right, I'm gonna grab my dominant hand again. And pull this over. Okay, and then again I'm gonna sneak underneath this cuff. four fingers in there. All right, so now I know that I am, my hands are sterile and this is just gonna go to the side. All right, so now I know that I'm ready to begin. So I'm sterile with my gloves here and I'm just going to take out one of these super sponges because that's about all that's gonna fit in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kinda open this up so it's not too thick. I kind of twist it a little bit. And I'm gonna set it inside here, kind of pack it, trying to avoid um, any of the areas touching or being out on the peri wound. Okay, so once I have that in there, then I can go ahead and take my gauze, place that over it, and then my ABD can go over that. All right, so put that on top of there. All right, so at this point, um, I don't necessarily need to be sterile. I'm gonna take my gloves off here. Wash my hands. You can put on clean gloves if you like. Um, I'm not gonna be worried about getting any fluid, body fluids on me at this point, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do taping here. Like I said, it's not what we really prefer because it's, it, it is a mannequin, so. All right, so you can do a couple of things. You can do a triple um, pane over the dressing or you can do like the four sides. Okay. 
and a lot of times that just kind of depends on what the provider or the wound um, provider or nurse decides how they want the dressing. Okay, so once I have that secured with tape, then I can go ahead and label it. Um, so you'd want to put the date that it was changed and the time is also recommended and make sure you just have your initials on there as well. Okay, so we have that done. All right, Tim, it looks like we got you all dressed up here. Doing okay pain-wise? Yep. Okay, good. Well, now I can go ahead and leave you alone there. Um, just let me know though, if you start having more pain or your pain doesn't become tolerable, um, I'm gonna try to keep you on a good schedule to stay on top of that pain. Um, and if you need anything else, just again, I have your call light here available for you. And I also have your bed locked low and your tray table will be accessible to you. And also I would set any safety alarms if I needed to. So that concludes the um, wet to dry dressing.